uh, to our YouTube uh, listeners, uh, we, we're just overjoyed at the response we get from you, and we continue to remind you to share with your friends, your neighbors, your Sunday school classes that we are here so they too can come aboard and be a part of what God is doing here at World Class Sunday School. Oh, somebody tell me. Welcome you to World Class Sunday School. Uh, again, God has blessed us to come together again for another sharing in His Word, and we just we're just so grateful and thankful. Let us go in prayer. Lord, again, we thank you for this time to share in Your Word. We pray and, and ask that our hearts and minds are open, so that we might receive the things that You would have for us to receive. And that we have a mindset to do the things that, that's pleasing in your sight. Again, we thank you for this time of sharing in your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praise as always. Amen. Well, uh, again, we are we're just so delighted to, to be here and uh, to be able to share with you on today. And we are uh, in, in our winter quarter. Our love for God, we're learning about, and in Unit 2 that uh, we're in, uh, we're loving God by trusting Christ. And today our lesson is to imitate Christ. Imitate Christ, and we are in Philippians, the uh, uh, second chapter. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 11. So... And today we have, we have two outlines that we're going to look at. The first one is exaltation to, self, to selflessness. That's verses uh, 1 through 4 in chapter 2 of Philippians. And the second outline is revelation of selflessness. And that's, uh, that's going to be verse 5 through 11 in the second chapter of Philippians. But here, uh, in, in to, today we continue. You know, last week we, we started uh, talking about, uh, reading about the letter that Paul wrote from the Roman prison to the church, uh, to the Philippian church. And, and last week we, we saw that he was encouraging the Christians to rejoice in all circumstances. And, and by him being in prison writing this letter, he was a prime example of how uh, you know, we should conduct ourselves in, in all circumstances. But in, here in chapter 2 that we're going to look at today, Paul will, will give us a pattern of Christian living. And, uh, you know, that's living un unselfishly, uh, as, as did Jesus Christ. Uh, he, Christ lived to serve others, and because uh, he humbled himself, God highly exalted him. And God would do the same for us if we want to make God happy. Be unselfish with one another. God, that that would glorify God if we had that attitude to to be unselfish and, and to look out for one another, to care and love for one another, it would really be pleasing to God. And we, we're going to see Paul. Paul will show us how, how this, uh, to, to have the same attitude of love and service and concern and compassion for our fellow man as Christ did. So we're going we're gonna to start here in, in uh, chapter 2 of Philippians. Uh, beginning with the first verse, we're going to read verses 1 through 4, and then we're going to talk about exaltation to selflessness. 
verse 1 said, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one man. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in the lowliness of man let each esteem others better than themselves. And verse 4 says, Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Okay, so here we, we're going to talk about exaltation to selflessness. And here uh, we're going we're gonna to look at, and Paul, Paul really gives us here uh, some gifts, uh, Christ's selfless gifts that, that he's given us. And he, here he says, if there be therefore any consolation, and we know there is, uh, any fellowship, any uh, comfort of love, we know that is. Any fellowship of the Spirit, we know it, know that is. And if any bowels of mercy. And here, here are these gifts we enjoy as a result of Christ's selflessness. Comfort, we enjoy comfort because of his love for us. And, and because we know that Christ loves us, and we, we're talking about those of us who, who have been born again by the Spirit of God, and we are comforted to know that God loves us. And because he loves us and has promised us that he would, he would always provide for us, now we can look to help others and not be so concerned about ourselves because we know the Lord is going to take care of us. And so now we have the, the wherewithal or the capacity to really focus on other, the need of others. Okay, and then the, the fellowship of the Spirit. We're all born into the family of God. We all share the, the Spirit of God that He has given us. And so this, this, this gives us a special, a special bond. And then uh, he lists the tenderness, uh, tenderness and compassion. Now, now, now uh, what this means, it means because we are united with Christ and members of his body, we have special bonds to one another. And our attitude toward one another is very, very important. It's, it's important to know how we should treat one another in the church, in our homes, in our communities, because now, now we know that this letter is to the church, and Paul is talking to those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. When we make that commitment, then we are bound to do the things that God has called us to do. And, and, the, first, and the thing that, that we're looking at here is we want to we wanna, uh, exhibit these gifts that Jesus Christ has made possible to us by, by what he, he's done on the cross for us. And, and then it goes on to say here in verse, in verse 2, it says, uh, talks about, our selfless imitation says, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded. And, and like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one man. And, and here, our, our selfless imitation, and Paul used the word like minded, like minded. Uh, like-minded according to Jesus Christ. Okay, like-minded like would help us from seeking self-praise. It would help us from, keep us from being hostile toward one another. Uh, 
like-minded will allow us to esteem others better than we esteem ourselves. Now, you know, this is really not a, a natural reaction because uh, with the, the mindset that we are, we come, we are born with is uh, to, to look out for ourselves. But we, we have a mindset to put ourselves before we put others. But here, we, we got to have a, you know, when we, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are, we are to live uh, according to kingdom uh, laws. And those are different uh, in, in reversal of, of the laws of, of the world. Because in the world, a person uh, exhibits selfishness by really just just looking looking out for themselves. But here, if we're gonna have the man, if we're gonna be like-minded in, in our relationship, then we're gonna have to have a, a change of mind because the the old mindset that we have of self-preservation is not a part of, of what what. Paul is teaching here. And so, so to be like-minded, that, that means that we are all on one accord. That means that we are speaking the same thing. That means that we have the same goals. And so, so, uh, so this, it's, not, it's not a natural reaction. Okay, in verse 3 he said, let, not, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. And, and uh, it, the strife is, is brings about hostility, and vain glory is when a person is seeking self praise, and so so we need to we need to turn away from those things, and the, and when, if you read on in, in Philippians, you will see in the church that uh, that there were there were animosity and and differences. And th those same things are in our churches today, and it, ca it causes uh, division in the church. And so it, here, if we're going to be uh, like-minded, if we're going to be on one accord, if, if we're going to have the same goals, then verse 4 says, says here, it says, Look not every man on his own thing. Now, you, you know, that, that <laughs> that's our old mindset. And... and before we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this, this is the mindset we had, and this is the spirit that we had. But now God has put his spirit in us, and it says, it says now uh, we're not going to look every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Uh, and uh, we, we're going we gonna to abandon the pursuit of self-interest, and then we're going to prioritize others. That that means that, that we're going to consider others' needs more so than, than our own. And, that, like, and as I said earlier, and we can do that because God, uh, uh, Christ has promised that he would provide, provide our every needs. And so, and so ver, ver, we're looking at verse 4. We're going to look not every man, and we're not going to look uh, on our own thing. We're not going to be so focused on ourselves till we have no regard for, uh, for the concern of others. And like I say, it's not, it's, not a, a natural, it's not a natural reaction for us because uh, we, we were born with, this selfish, with a selfish spirit, uh, and, and but if we're gonna if we're gonna be transformed and if we're gonna uh, if we're gonna take heed to what this lesson is showing us, and we we're gonna have to have a, a change of heart, and so so uh, just looking at this is this verse it says, look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. So. Uh, this, this really is it's a hard saying, but how can how can we do this? How can we 
put others uh, 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 interests ahead of our interests. Well, let me tell you, friend, we can't do it on, on our own. So that brings us to the, to the second part, uh, the second outline of our lesson. Uh, it's, uh, we're going to look at a revelation of selflessness. How, how do we get to this point? And we're going to uh, look at verses 5 through 11. Starting with verse 5, it says, Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. And so, so, so we say we looked, we looked at verse four, and verse four is telling us, not look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. And so what we're going to have to have a, a reversal here of, of, of the way we've been thinking, and we're going to have to think a different way. And so how do we do that? And we do it, we do it according to verse 5 says, Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now we, we're talking about, uh, the divine Christ here in verses 5 and 6. It says, Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Okay, so, so the man of Christ must be uh, consciously adopted. And look, this, this is a choice that we make. We choose, when we, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we, we, we have to make the choice to submit to Christ, and we have to choose to want to have the mind of Christ. And, and it's, it's something that you have, we, you have to pursue vigorously. It's not, it's not going to just happen when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, your mindset is not going to just automatically change. We have to work at it. It says, it says uh, you, you, we have to make a conscious effort to pursue the things of God. And, and how do we do that? We do that by reading and studying God's Word with a mindset to be obedient to the things that God revealed to us through his word. We have to do that, and, and we have to do it consistently, and we have to do it with purpose. We have to do it prayerfully, uh, and, and meditating on his word, and, and applying his word. Look, when, we, when God gives us the revelation and shows us what it is, uh, how it is that he wants us to live, we have to not only just read it and know it in our mind, we have to make it a part of our daily life. When we incorporate God's word into our life, that's when the change come about, okay? And so, so we, have to, we have to vigorously, uh, we ha first of all, we have to consciously adopt uh, the attitude. We have to want to change, and we have to make the choice to change. And then we have to do the things that, that it's going to take to make the change in our life. And then, then uh, 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 verse 6 says, 
who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. John, uh, uh, John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, showing that Jesus Christ, before his incarnation, it, 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 it is God. He, he, he existed, and he's God, and, and to see, he's not uh, robbing God because he's equal to God. Now, in order, in, uh, now showing, showing his, his selflessness, God came, lowered himself, and came to earth to live among us. I mean, he, he came in the form uh, of a man, a, a man servant. A man servant. He humbled himself, and uh, the, when we talk about the, the humility here, means uh, servant, and and that's what you know. Normally, when we think about the word uh, humility, we think of, of a person being humble. We think about a person who who is uh, do work and don't want to be recognized for it, or a don't mind not being recognized for it, but this, this humility goes deeper than that. The humility here is actually serving others. And look, that's what, that's what Christ did. He came to earth, and in his, his 33 years of uh, existing here on earth, in the form of a man, because the Bible teaches and tells us that Christ experienced everything that we experience. And so God lowered himself in order to be in that position where he could, he could feel our pain. He, could, he, he knew our anxieties. He, the Bible said he was tempted in every way as we are. And he humbled himself and allowed himself to be crucified on, on the cross. Now, the crucifixion was, was a, a painful, humiliating experience. And it was it was uh, the Romans did it to those who uh, who, who were uh, evil and, and committed crimes, but Christ had committed no crime. Because the Bible said that he was tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. And so, so he he loved us enough until he lowered himself and came to this earth as a man, serving us, uh, and and. He lowered himself. He 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 was humble and and he he gave himself for us. And that, and look, when we have the man set of Christ, when we allow Christ's man to to rule us, then we're gonna have the same love and compassion for our fellow man. That's what Paul is showing us here. Because Christ, because Christ has, set, has, has set the standard and showed us uh, what it means to be humble, we're going to be imitators of him because we, we're going to have the same mindset that, that Christ had. And, uh, and I, it's, it's something that just doesn't come. On its own, we have to work. We have to work at it. And and then uh, he said, and it said, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was like was uh, made in the likeness of man. He did it for us. He he lowered himself for us, so so that we would not die in our sin. Christ gave of himself. And, she, and look, he, he took all the, the ridicule, the embarrassment, the, the punishment uh, that, that went, went along with being crucified. He willingly did it so that he, his, he, he could die on the cross and shed his blood so that we might be forgiven of our sin. And, and, and being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death.
even the death of the cross. He, Christ knew knew what what all this entailed, and and uh, he he was agonized about it when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane playing, praying, but he realized and he knew that this was God's will and this was God's plan of salvation being fulfilled. And, and he said to, to, to his father, not my will, but your will be done. And then uh, uh, it, it, Christ, he, because he humbled himself, verse 9 said, wherefore God also highly has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Because Christ humbled himself, God exalted him and, and gave him a name above every name. And then he sit, he, now he sits at the right hand of God and, and uh, inter interceding for us. And because Christ humbled himself, God exalted him and set him at his right hand and declared, God declared that every creature of the universe will bow to Christ. See, it says right here, see, he says uh, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That, that includes everything and everybody. They will bow to Christ and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And look, now, while, while the blood is running warm in your vein, you had the opportunity to con uh, confess that Christ is Lord and that he died on the cross for your sin. You do it now willingly, then you are ushered, ushered into the family of God. But if you refuse to do that, then one day you're going to have, you're going to see that Christ is who he say he is. He's the son of God and he came to, to give his life as a ransom for our sins. And when you acknowledge that now, then you won't be forced to do it uh, when, when you realize that, that Christ is who he say he is. And look, everybody's going to realize, it. even those who, who, who decide that they, they don't, don't want to be a part of him, they're going to see it. And, and realize and recognize who Jesus Christ really is. So now is the time. Now is the time. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sin, now is the time to open up your heart and accept him. And for those of us who have accepted him, we should strive to have the mindset of Christ. Lord, we thank you for this time. We are always grateful, Lord, that you open and reveal your word to us. And we, we pray right now that we have a mindset to be obedient to you, to do the things that are, that are pleasing in your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praise as always. Amen. Well, again, friends, we thank you for joining us on today. We look forward to having you in our next session. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer.